Hi, DD Solar here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I cut two inch thick four by eight sheets of foam board insulation to insulate my metal building. For about seven days straight, today being the seventh, I've labored in my solar workshop installing green foam board. It's about 2,000 square feet of insulation. Each sheet is four foot by eight foot and two inches thick. I tried putting an eight foot sheet up there, uh, but that was just too hard alone. So I started cutting them in half in four foot squares. Still pretty hard, but at least it was safer, less struggling on the ladder and the platform. About 30 minutes ago, I put the last sheet of foam in the ceiling, and that's right there where I'm pointing. So right now, the project is mostly done, and hopefully it will keep the shed warmer since it is winter and it's starting to get cold at night, and it's getting colder during the day, some days. So I didn't want to be caught in the middle of winter with no insulation. If you look closely, the white stuff you see is actually a vapor barrier it's also a quarter inch of foam and a foil faced radiant barrier outside of that. The green you see there is the two inch thick foam board, eight foot sheets. And of course there's a gap at the top because my walls are 10 foot high. The external radiant barrier is a little bit in contact with the metal sheathing on the building, but it isn't always in contact. There are some places where it touches. Uh, there is some standoff. So the outside radiant barrier is not the primary radiant barrier I'm going to be using but it certainly does help. There's another view showing that almost the entire building is insulated except for part of the gable ends. And you can see I've got one uh, sheet installed in the gable ends right there. Uh, that won't take very long. The, the sheets that are vertical are much easier than the ceiling. The ceiling was probably four days of work. Uh, it was really, really exhausting. And there's another view showing that there are some uninsulated areas and I'll be working on those, but the urgency is gone and uh, I feel like the building has enough insulation that I won't be wasting my money heating it. It should be pretty good. That's two inches thick foam board and it's uh, R10. I don't know what my actual R value is going to be, but it sure is a lot better than nothing. And here's another view. I'm gonna try to pan the camera. It's probably not gonna be very smooth because I have a basic tripod and no stabilizer. And there's some more view. You can see there's a couple of spots above the roll-up door that have not been insulated. And there's some more areas right there at the gable ends. Not too worried about those. Not a lot of work left, really. And there's some extra foam board I have. We'll be using some of that. Kind of hard to get a good clip of the ceiling with this camera. The, ang the lens is not a wide angle lens, so it really, it's narrow. I'm not zoomed in, that's just how it is. And you can see all of the insulation work up there. That was very laborious. Uh, the peak of the roof is 13 feet off the ground. 
in order to insulate the peak of the roof, I had to build a work platform. And by now that video should already be released. And I'm gonna pan around and show you the work platform. So that's what I'm referring to. That's the work platform. It will also double as a shelf. So I'm getting a lot of use out of this work platform, but it's also gonna give me a use as a shelf and I need a lot of storage. So it was a win-win to build that. It was much safer in a ladder. I would not recommend working on a ladder for an extended period of time. It's too easy to make mistakes. It's better to build a work platform or a scaffold and it's a much safer and actually more efficient in the long run because you can walk around and approach the task from different angles and you don't have to keep worrying about the ladder tipping over. It's just better. Right now I need to put in two pieces over the roll-up door and those pieces are about 19 inches tall by about 45 inches wide and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I cut those using my Bosch barrel grip jigsaw and my Bosch knife blade which is designed for cutting foam and soft materials. For this video I'm going to use a fresh sheet 4x8 foot 2 inches thick. It's just easier to do the layout. Generally speaking, I use a tape measure, a builder square, a combo square, and a sharpie. You may also find that a T-square or a large square that's at least four foot or somewhere close is very handy. And for eight foot long cuts, an eight foot long straight edge or even a six foot long works really good. One of the requirements I had when I started this project is to make no dust. I don't want foam dust in the air and on the ground and sticking to everything. I don't want to breathe it and I don't want to have to clean it up. To accomplish that, I used a special jigsaw blade. It's a T-shank blade made by Bosch. The model number is T313AW3. I also used the Bosch GST 18 volt 47 barrel grip jigsaw. And the reason why I use this jigsaw is because it sits really, really low and the grip is down close to the shoe, which allows you to be extremely precise with the cuts. However, I do want to make a note that this tool is extremely dangerous. It has an on-off switch instead of a trigger, which means you can very easily injure yourself. And obviously it's worth pointing out that with this tool, you should remove the battery before checking the blade or working with the blade or doing anything other than using the tool as it's normally supposed to be used. As soon as you lift the tool up, it's dangerous. That blade can do a lot of damage very quickly if you accidentally turn the tool on. Okay, so now that the safety warning is over, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the blade close up. Take the battery out. Okay, so here's the blade. So this type of blade is actually pretty neat in that it's a knife blade. It doesn't actually have a kerf. It doesn't actually remove any material except a very tiny amount. It might leave little splinters occasionally and that can't be helped, but I would say it's more than 99% less than what a normal jigsaw or a normal rotary saw or circular saw would leave. Fortunately, the camera isn't focusing. Now the blade is not razor sharp. It just looks like it is, but it's sharp enough to get the job done. And what it does, is it divides the material. It divides the foam in half, kind of like a utility knife would do. And I've looked around and Bosch makes this type of blade. They make other kinds of blades. And there are different types of blades you can buy for soft material, but these are the ones I ended up using. And I uh, forgot the actual model number is T313AW. T313AW3 is the pack of three blades. And I also wanted to point out that this blade is so precise that you can literally split your line in half. If you make a mark on a piece of foam, you can literally cut that line down the middle and cut it in half if you want to. Now the blade doesn't always cut straight if you don't get the basal planted perfectly square and plumb. It will wander, the blade will warp, and it will cause the cut to be wavy uh, down below the surface. If you're cutting two inch thick foam board or thicker, if you're cutting one inch foam board, it probably doesn't matter. But once you get to two inch thick foam board, you really wanna pay attention to keeping the saw plumb and square and line up your cuts properly before you go into the material. Otherwise, this blade will actually bend and warp and you will actually have to bend it back. And this is not a really precise cut. However, I wanted to show what it looks like after it's been cut. And you can see that there's some heat. The, the saw develops some heat on the blade. And yes, it does create quite a stink. Uh, if you keep your face near the cut area, you can actually smell the smell of foam getting hot. 
And of course those fumes are probably not good to breathe. So there are some downsides to using this type of blade. It's not perfect. Everything you see here is actually hard. It's not, this is not dust. It's actually melted foam. But the fumes are not that bad. Uh, really, I, I'm able to avoid it most of the time. I catch a whiff sometimes. And it sometimes creates these strings of hot melted foam that kind of peel off. But honestly, these are, compared to foam dust, if you've ever cut a lot of green foam board or any foam board and you, you've seen the dust all over the shop, believe me, uh, you're not putting up with very much. I don't mind a few strings of foam and a little bit of fumes, and it really doesn't bother me at all. And finally, I wanted to show you the package the jigsaw blades came in because there's some pretty interesting information on there. First, this blade is said to be a knife edge blade. Uh, it doesn't really have a kerf in that it removes any material. If it does remove any material, it's very, very tiny. Normally, a blade like this would remove at least enough material to accommodate the width of the blade. But this blade actually divides the foam in half and melts a little bit of it, distorts a little bit of it. It also shows a roll of fiberglass bat insulation and a cardboard box and claims to be a special blade for soft materials. It does not show foam board, but I assure you this blade works very well for cutting thick foam board up to two inches thick. I have not tried any four inch or six inch foam board. I don't have any. And in fact, the store in my area doesn't even seem to have it. This is the thickest foam board I could find or I would have gotten something thicker. It's also a T-shank blade. And in fact, that's why I bought the jigsaw. I have a U-shank blade on my old jigsaw and I was forced to buy a new one anyway to get this blade. Also, it says on the back of the card that Bosch invented the jigsaw in 1946 and also developed the industry standard T-shank blade. I didn't know that. So these blades are made in Switzerland, so that's very impressive. We know the Swiss make really good quality products. Now I'm going to mark my layout on a piece of foam board and I'm going to go ahead and cut it using this jigsaw. And I wanted to point out that foam board, uh, at least the product that I bought, is two inches thick but actually it is not a consistent product. Some of it is more than two inches thick and some of it is less than two inches thick. That's kind of hard to take when it's $30 a sheet, but it is what it is. Foam board is not necessarily perfectly square. And so you can be pretty precise with your layout and your markings, but just keep in mind the foam is not always going to be perfectly shaped, even if you do a good job measuring and marking the product. I also want to point out that my metal building does not have a single post that is plumb or square. Not a single dimension in any part of it is the same. Not a single template could be used. Every single piece of foam I cut for this building had to be precision cut to fit the two posts in particular that I was placing the insulation in between. I thought I was just going to make a template and copy it 300 times. Boy, was I wrong. In some cases, the dimensions were off by over an inch. And to me, this is rather strange because when you build a building, you're supposed to have everything plumb and square so that the structure shares the load properly but the building is already built, all the screws are in, all the sheet metal is on, and there is nothing I can do about it. So I had to cut every single board precisely to fit the opening. Normally you want to secure your insulation with some strapping or furring strips or something. In this case, because I'm working alone and I'm pressed for time, uh, I went ahead and just cut the foam board deliberately bigger than it should have been, and I used a piece of wood and a hammer to hammer it forcefully in between the metal posts in the building. However, that creates certain problems, and so I would not recommend friction fit to be a permanent install, for example, in the ceiling. It might work for the walls, but for the ceiling, you're going to want to eventually put tape or furring strips or some kind of anchoring system to make absolutely sure the foam board doesn't move or shift over the years, and also it could fall down out of the ceiling, and that could be a problem. The first cut I need to make is 45 and a half inches. Actually, I'm going to make it slightly less than that. I don't want it too tight. This is going to be on the wall, so it's vertical. So that's f relatively easy compared to putting it in the ceiling. The height is going to be 19 and 3 eighths. The small pieces are the easiest to measure, cut, and install if they're on a wall. If you've never used thick foam board in a metal building before, I would suggest try out a few small pieces on the wall and get a feel for the working with the material and also the tools before trying to do anything bigger. I found putting the foam board in the ceiling to be incredibly hard, then again, I was working alone and it's quite dangerous and I really, it was not very efficient. So you probably will have two or three people helping you, I hope. So you may not have to do that, but I found it was better to practice and start small. I'm gonna start in the corner of the foam board, which is reasonably square, although it's a little bit rounded, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be that perfect. 
Part of measuring properly is keeping your tape measure square and straight. So to help me do that, I'm going to start at this corner of a fresh piece of foam board. And I can just line it up with the edge of the foam board. And I need to make a mark at 19 and 3 eighths of an inch. And I use a Sharpie to do that. And I found the Sharpie to be good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at 19 and 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to go about 45 inches behind that and I'm going to make another mark. And I'm going to use that to uh, help keep my other line straight. Okay, so now I'm going to move my camera over this way. And now I'm going to measure 19 and 3 eighths inch again. But I'm going to make sure that my tape measure is straight. Because if it's not straight, I won't get a good measurement. And of course, foam board isn't necessarily guaranteed to be square, but it's just foam board insulation. We don't have to be that precise. So I'm going to come up here to 19 and 3 eighths. Make a mark. If the two marks that I made at 19 and 3 eighths are reasonably accurate, I can line my tape measure up against both of them, which is what I have done. And I check both ends to see that they're lined up. And I generally split the mark down the middle, or at least I try to. Now we need to make a mark at 45 and a half inches. So I'm just going to come right down here to 45 and a half. And that's the length of the piece of material that I'm going to cut. Now I need a straight edge. And you can use just about anything you want. I have several straight edges. I'm just going to go ahead and use one that I have. This is the straight edge I'm going to use. It was actually loaned to me by the gentleman across the street. And it came from a shipyard and was used to build ships. So very interesting. So I'm going to take the marker, Sharpie. And I stop my line right there. That's 45 and a half inches. This is 19 and 3 eighths. So this helps me line up the straight edge. This helps me stop my line at 45 and a half inches. So now I'm just going to carry that line all the way across the straight edge. Okay, I made my line that was 45 and a half inches. So that's the long dimension of this piece that I'm cutting. Now I need to make the line that's 19 and 3 eighths inches long at right angles. And that will be pretty easy to do using a square or something similar. I have a 4 foot drywall T-square, which is ever so slightly out of square, but it's still good enough for foam board. And I know which way it leans, uh, meaning that it's slightly out of square, so it doesn't really bother me that much. So I'm just going to use this to do the job. Okay, there's the 19 and 3 eighths inch at right angles. And this is uh, just foam board, so it doesn't have to be too precise. I think this is more than adequate for cutting foam board. It doesn't need to be perfect. And there's a look at the layout. It's 45 by 19. And I started at the corner. That way I only have to draw two lines. It saves me a little bit of time. So now all I have to do is take my jigsaw and cut this piece out. And then I can uh, push it into the wall or hammer it into the wall. And I need to put the blade back in the jigsaw. So make sure the battery's out. Line up the roller. There we go.
right, there's my piece. It's uh, 45 by 19 inches. And uh, now I just need to push it up into the wall in between the steel studs over the top of the roll-up door, and then I can move on to the next piece. And it's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but this piece fits pretty tight. And usually you can push it in with your hands, but if it's too tight, you will need a block of wood and a hammer. It's pretty self-explanatory. And you just want to start pounding on the edges where it sticks and just push it in. And just keep doing that on either side until the piece friction fits in. Now this piece is really doesn't need to be this tight. The reason I make them tight is simply because you want to seal out air and the less spray foam and tape and whatnot that you have to use the better also i don't want the pieces to move around any more than they have to so this piece is it's tight but i could have made it a little looser i tend to cut mine a little bit bigger than they need to be so they fit tight if you want to you can cut them smaller and they won't fit so tight and you won't have such a battle getting them in but then you might have to do more anchoring or maybe put up more furring strips so really uh it's up to the individual to decide what works best for them. Okay, there's the piece right above the roll-up door. Obviously this process repeats itself over and over and over again until you've gone around the whole building. Uh, the ceiling is the hardest. Uh, that was done, I did that by myself. And of course I used my work platform for some of that work. I had a little bit of help towards the end, but I was the guy on the ladder and on the platform. And you can see I've done all the ceiling and some of the pieces didn't fit right and I had to correct that. I still have to do the gable ends, those are not done and that gable in there and of course there's a piece over the roll-up door still that i have to do over to the right but the pieces on the wall really don't bother me that much they're the easiest by far the ceiling is another story uh, you really need help to do that it's really not efficient to work alone you need a minimum of two people unless the ceilings are really really low it's just not safe to work alone i went ahead and did that but it's not safe so i wouldn't recommend it incidentally i have tons and tons of scrap material so I can use these for home repairs, experiments, crafting, or just whatever I feel like. So I'm not going to waste any of this stuff. It's just going to stay here in storage. And whenever I need a piece of foam, I can just pick from anything that I want, any size or any shape. 